Hello everyone. We are going to look at graphing an antiderivative. There are more mathy names for it, but this is fine for now. So before I get too far, copies of these graphs that I'm going to show you, there's going to be two examples, are on a PDF on our class webpage. So you, if you want to play along at home, you can do that. So when you're drawing an antiderivative, basically if this is our derivative and you're like trying to work your way backwards and figure out what the original function looked like, the things that you have to know, one, you need a point, otherwise you can't know where to put the graph. And two, you want to just kind of analyze things and ask yourself, well, what am I looking at? And in this case, I'm looking at a quadratic and I know that the derivative of a cubic is a quadratic. So that tells me I'm going to be drawing a cubic function. So when I finish with this thing, it should look like John Travolta doing a little disco. And that's totally a reference you probably don't get. So I made this table just because it's kind of helpful for keeping track of things. And I'm actually going to start down here at three with putting my three here, and then I'll work upwards on my table eventually. So I know that at the point, I have to go through the point three, two. And I also know that at the point three, my Y value of my derivative is zero. So that tells me my slope is zero. These Y values for the derivative are the slopes. So you don't want to get distracted looking at like, oh, this curve is going downhill, then it's going uphill, nothing like that. You're saying my Y value here is the slope of the thing I'm about to draw. So the only thing I know at this point is at three, this thing is flat. So I can draw just a tiny little flat bit. Moving to four. By the time I'm at four, I need my slope to be about 1.2, 1.3. So a little steeper than Here's a slope of one, so a little steep, steeper than that by the time I'm at four. And you don't need to like get a ruler out if, unless it helps you. And then after four, it gets steeper yet. So I'm gonna go sweeping fairly quickly uphill. And just as a little bit of a check, if I look at x equals four here, the li that line I just, this or this, um, if I drew a tangent line at four, I am steeper than than one, so that's good. Now I have to move backwards towards two, one, zero, all the way back to negative one. I'm doing that in kind of a set because this is all negative values through here. And by the time I'm at zero, or sorry, I'm, by the time I'm at negative one, my slope will be zero, zero again. In between, I'm going to have a bunch of negative slopes. And so if I'm going from negative one over to three, this whole time it's going to be going downhill. So that tells me that negative one, the flat spot, it's going to be somewhere up higher than x equals than y equals two. And working my way backwards just to take a few notes basically, like at negative when x is one, my slope is negative one. I don't re necessarily need to fill those in, but I will. So like at x equals two, my slope is about negative 0.8 and the same for zero. So the steepest portion in between negative one and three is when X is one. So I'm gonna work my way backwards. So I'm gonna head uphill as I go right to left, which of course is a negative slope when you look at it properly left to right. And I know that I'm gonna go, as I move to the left, I'm going uphill, I get steeper, then less steep, and then I'm gonna flatten off at one. And this takes, this takes practice, it takes time. I've done this for a long time. And I'm pretty decent at it, but you know, erasers are also my friend. So I'm gonna go uphill and then flatten off. And if I do this right, which eh, it's a little rough, I will admit, like it would be better maybe like something more like that. So, cause I want it steepest at one. It's, this is tricky stuff. There's no getting around it. I recommend erasable pens or pencils as you're drawing these. So I'm fine with you seeing my mistakes too, because you know, mistakes are how we learn. You shouldn't be doing things perfectly every time. Okay, moving to the left. So by the time I'm at negative two, my slope is about 1.2. Negative three, I'm at quite steep with a slope of three. So this guy is gonna go diving down to the left basically. And now looking at what I've drawn here, like I know the derivative 
is quadratic. So I should have drawn a cubic and I did ish. And that's okay. It's not perfect. This is not the prettiest graph I've ever drawn, but let's compare it to the, to the real deal. This is how they look. And actually like my, my maximum here is pretty spot on. I am flat where it needs to be flat in both of those spots. Cause I have zero slopes in there. I have, it's going downhill between the max and the min. And it looks basically like a cubic should look close enough. So there's our first example. Second example, we're going to go a little trickier. Okay. So this guy time, our derivative is apparently a cubic. So that tells me that my antiderivative, if I, you know, the thing that has a derivative that's cubic is a quartic, an x to the fourth graph, which an f, x to the fourth graph often looks kind of like a sloppy w. The thing I know is that at zero, it goes through the point three. Sorry. Yeah. And so, and also at zero, my slope is zero. So I'm going to put this in the middle because I'm going to be moving left and right. So at zero, my slope is zero. And then just kind of looking at, I'm going to move left to right here. So I'm starting at zero. I have a slope of zero. So I know it's flat right here. To the right, my slope needs to be about negative 0.7 and then negative 0.8 ish. And then by the, by the time I'm at three, my slope is back to zero. So I'm going to go downhill from zero to three and it's going to be flat at three. As soon as I'm past the three, like at four, my slope is about two and a half. So I'm going to go downhill and to, and then, and aiming to flatten off at, f at X equals three. And just kind of eyeballing things like I'm never too steep because none of these values from zero to three are, are greater than, you know, are below negative one. So I didn't go too steep, so I'm happy with that. Going from three to four, I need to go uphill. And by the time I'm at four, it needs to be quite steep. So this goes steep in a hurry, something like that. Now moving to the left at negative two, I see another zero. In between those, my, my slope is about 0.4. Oops, that should be positive. Trying to make this fairly tidy and failing. I know I'll put a zero in. So my slope at negative one is about 0.4. And then at negative two, I'm at zero. So this guy is going to have a positive slope. So it's going uphill as I approach heading towards zero. And then at negative two, it needs to be flat. And then to the left of negative two, like at negative three, my slope is negative two. So as I'm kind of planning ahead, I need positive slope. So it's going to be doing some sort of thing like this. And then to the left of two, it's going to be heading downhill. And I just need to go down as I work right to left, it's downhill, which really is a positive slope flatten out. And then I have these negative slopes happening to the left of negative two. So I have that. So double checking things, the places I need to look closely, the places that are flat, negative when I, with the way I drew it, negative two, zero, and three. And my derivative is zero in those three spots. From z negative two to zero, I need to be going, I'm going uphill and I have positive values for my derivative. From zero to three, I have neg I'm going downhill, so negative, which I have negative values for my derivative. And this looks like a sloppy W, so I can be fairly confident that, yeah, I've drawn a quartic here. And checking this against the official one. I think I did better that time than on the first one. Who knew? I guess you just get better with practice. And that's the whole point. So on the class page, you can find these two graphs. There are four additional graphs that you can practice with. And although they are not assigned, I highly recommend it.